triple through wedged mortise and tenons. Part three. All right, parts one and two, we talked about using the router to cut these mortises by using a template. We discussed squaring the mortises on both sides. Part two, we discussed some of the principles of what we needed to, to do to those mortises. One of which was make sure that on the entry side, it is wider than on the exit side. That way we can push a tenon through there, it'll fit, but it'll just squeeze out on the other side and that's exactly what we want. We want the tenon to be the same size as the first half inch in here and for that tenon to be right up against those walls. <clears throat> All right, we also discussed when you're tapering in order to accommodate the splitting with the, with the wedges that that taper needs to go all the way down in a straight line to almost the bottom. In other words, if I'm an inch and a half up here and an inch and a quarter down below, then I, I need that to go almost the way down. I can't just go the first half an inch or inch in and then have it go straight down from there. Otherwise, the wedge won't be able to go down deep enough to spread the outside edge over to the wall. All right, so now we're part three and we're talking about fitting the tenons for the mortises. The first thing that I do, and I've already done it, I'm just gonna talk about it, is I use my Veritas dual marking gauge and I go from a common reference point, in this case the top, adjust my marking devices to where they just bridge that mortise. And then with that all set, then I go, and it's gone here now, so I can't do it. Then I go to the top edge of my tenon piece, and I mark where that tenon is going to be. And that should be awfully precise. So I have this part here. I've marked off all three tenons. And uh, then I need to get that cut somehow. I can cut it by hand. That's a lot of work particularly when you're talking about so many of these connections. Uh, I could do it a number of different ways. The way I like to do it is to, I have power tools, so I want to use them. So I uh, take this to the bandsaw and I push this across the bandsaw, making sure that I stay in the waste area of my line. In other words, when I'm done cutting on the bandsaw, I can still see my lines and that my lines should be the exact width that I want so as long as I can still see them then what I start doing is I start paring down to the lines and when I get pretty close then I start measuring like crazy so if this is my tenon number three this is my mortise number three this mortise size wise so that's like uh, 0.83. So if I measure this, then I'm at like 0 0.87, 0 0.88. Well, 0 0.88 will not fit into 0 0.83. So I don't even need to try. I see a lot of people trying and trying until they finally get to fit. Well, use some calipers. Just, uh, you know, if you need to measure two or three times to convince yourself, that your tenon is still bigger than your mortise, then go ahead and do that. Furthermore, my mortise on the other side is even less. So if I measure number three here, mortise number three, I get them all labeled with a little tape so I know which tenon's going into which mortise. And uh, that's like 0 0.80. And so uh, I need to get this down to where it will fit in and end up at 0 0.80. Now, the part that I want to focus on, since I have about a quarter of an inch, half an inch here that will stick out, is I'm dealing with this area right here that is going to be, somewhere in there is going to be right at my 
outside edge. In other words, when they come out here, that's going to be somewhere between these two lines. What I do is I make that my area that once I get it to be equal to my outside mortise hole, I make very sure I don't sand it, chisel it, uh, file it, or do anything to it again. Once I get it the right size to fit my out, my exiting part of my mortise, then it is religiously left alone. Furthermore, the outside edges of my mortise are not to be touched because I'm trying to get everything to fit that once I decide that this area right here is equal to this area here then I don't touch either one of them. I might have to go inside here to carve out my inner walls but I do that by taking my chisel below the lip and then try to make that wall uh, convex. Uh, so don't touch it. Don't touch the edge. Don't touch the critical area. So all the rest of this can be uh, chiseled away until I know that it's small enough to fit into my mortise. I don't even care if this is smaller down here than it is at my critical spot because that won't be seen. I'll have a blind area here where everything closes up and that's all inside of the of the the joint. Uh, this is what's seen. This is what I want to look like. I know what I'm doing. So that's where I am. That's what I do. I just continue to chisel away, usually going you know in this way, uh, watching my grain splitting Make sure I don't get too big of a chunk coming off, getting down to my lines, measure, 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 measure. When I finally feel like it's equal to or less than my mortise, then I'll, I'll try the fit. I, I want to sneak up on it. I don't want to end up overshooting it and then finding out that in my critical area it is too small compared to the critical area of my mortise, which is the, actually this side here, which is where it's going to come out. So I want this exactly equal to this, and everything else doesn't matter so much. So when I say that, you can round over these edges, but if you're going to do that, start beyond your line. Start beyond your sacrosanct area. Don't touch this area. Do it back here. So around these edges, uh, make sure the corners are nice and clean. Round over the entry edges so you don't have a nice sharp piece trying to push through that mortise and catching on some little piece in there. Uh, you might have to keep coming back and cleaning up the inside of your mortise, but again, don't touch the exiting face perfectly okay to touch the interior face, uh, the face where you're going to enter. So I just keep doing that till it uh, fits. Then I look for any gaps that I might have anywhere here and whether or not it's closing up nice and tight. I'm not going to go into that uh, in this video, but I do have another video called uh, how to use your feeler gauges in order to close up any gaps in your joinery. That's the end of part three. I hope if you're going to do the Samurai Carpenter workbench or something that's similar with triple through wedge mortise and tenons that this series of three videos will help you do that. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.